Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today guys, we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says, without all these four, your Quran recitation is rejected. Wow. And this one was done by Arabic 001 channel. So you can actually make your reference, you understand, to it if you want to check the authenticity of this um, video. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes. And I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this so let's get down to this video and then check this out reciting the quran is a ibadah or an act of worship which is something like prayer for example which requires that you do it in a certain way otherwise it will not be accepted you can't just simply pray fajr whenever you want or however you want you must follow certain steps and guidelines that's why Qur'an recitation as ibadah requires that you follow certain guidelines for it to be accepted, insha'Allah. Here are the four conditions to follow so that your Qur'an recitation is accepted, insha'Allah. All four are very important, but the last one is the one that most people overlook, so watch till the end. First, and most importantly, intention. Although this is the easiest thing to do, it is also the easiest thing to overlook or kind of mess up. Especially when you do a certain ibadah for a long time, the intention behind it may start to fade or even change. So renewing your intention and reminding yourself with it is too important. But what should your intention be? Well, your intention should be that your recitation is purely for the sake of Allah. So for nothing or no one else, only Allah. And now some might be thinking, well, that's pretty easy. How can anyone miss this? Well, in many ways. Like, for example, someone would say, because I have a nice voice and I want to use it. Or show off your tajweed or knowledge about the Quran. Or you want to recite the Quran in people's gatherings and make some money. You want to impress those praying behind you with your recitation and other sort of intentions where Allah is not the only one you seek. So your intention should not be for Allah and or something else, but must only be for the sake of Allah. Instead, your intention could be to ponder over the word of Allah because reciting the Quran is a ibadah and I want to worship Allah because you want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, because you want to go to Jannah, or you're afraid of Jahannam, or just simply because you love the Qur'an. And these are just examples for the intention that you might have for your recitation to be accepted, insha'Allah. And remember, intention is in your heart, and it is not something that you speak out or say out loud. Condition number two, reciting the Qur'an properly using the tajweed. What we mean here is the basic tajweed, which means pronouncing every letter properly from its proper makhraj with correct tashkil that does not change the meaning of the ayat. Using other tajweed rules like nun sakina, qalqala and other rules make your recitation closer to the sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him. And remember what Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him said the one who's proficient in the recitation of the Qur'an will be with the honorable and obedient scribes. And he who recites the Qur'an and finds it difficult to recite, doing his best to recite in the best way possible, will have two rewards. So the better you are at reciting the Qur'an, the greater the reward. And even if you are still learning and your tajweed is not perfect, but you are doing your best, you will have a great reward as well. And with the will of Allah, you will perfect your recitation. Condition number three, beautify your voice. 
Our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, told us to make our voices beautiful when reciting the Qur'an. Naturally, not everyone has a beautiful voice or the voice of Shaykh Al-Husari, for example. But the intended meaning here is to recite the Qur'an with the most beautiful voice you have, without exaggeration or singing the ayat. And that's very important. And in another less known but an authentic hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he elaborates on another aspect of what beautiful voice is when reciting the Qur'an. He said, Among the people who recite the Qur'an with the most beautiful voices is the man who, when you hear him, you think that he fears Allah. So beautifying your voice is for everyone not just for those who have a certain specific gift. Now, condition number four, applying tartil, which has two aspects to it. For one, it refers to the speed of recitation that is not too fast to the point that if someone is listening to you, they wouldn't understand what you are reciting. So your recitation has to make sense and to be understood. It should not be too fast to the point that you can't make words out from each other. But the other aspect of tartil also implies moving your lips and reciting with a voice that you at least can hear. So reciting the Qur'an is with a voice that you at least can hear, not just by reading with your eyes. But what if I want to recite without moving my lips just by looking at the mushaf? Is that allowed? Or do you get rewarded for that? Well, yes, of course. In reciting the Qur'an, we differentiate between two things. Qira'atu tartil and Qira'atu tadabbur. The first one, Qira'atu tartil is the one we just talked about. Reciting the Qur'an with a voice. And the second one, Qira'atu tadabbur is the act of just looking at the mushaf and pondering over its ayat by looking at its words and thinking about them. And that is also something that we are rewarded for. But not the type of recitation that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, meant when he said, Whoever recites a letter from the Book of Allah, he will be credited with a good deed, and a good deed gets a tenfold reward. I don't say... Alif, Lam, Mim is one letter, but Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. So with this he means reciting the Qur'an as we indicated earlier with a voice that you at least can hear. So both cases are actually good. When you recite the Qur'an with your eyes, you get rewarded, inshallah, and when you recite the Qur'an with your lips, you get rewarded as well, inshallah. So the next time you open your mushaf, hopefully right after this video, remember, renew your intention and direct it towards Allah alone. Follow the sunnah by reciting correctly with a beautiful voice and using tartil. And inshallah, your recitation will be accepted and heavily rewarded. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Quran in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That's a very interesting um, video learning about the four things that should be included in your recitation. So, it's a very interesting video. But then let's hear from you Nancy Grace first before I can be able to conclude on this. First, the intention. Honestly, I relate it to my own religion. That means that God is watching the intention. So the intention has to be communicating to God. So you have to give the whole attention in studying the word of God meditating the word of God by doing so we will now apply it in our daily lives and we start working and obeying 
the commandment and the things that God have written and the things that, that is written in the word of God. So I have learned that my intention has to be right with God, meditating and studying the word of God. So we, it means that Christians and other religion has to learn this, that our intention, to set our intention right while reciting the Quran or reading the Bible or reading the word, studying the word of God. When we are singing, when we are worshiping our maker, we have to use a good voice. And he said, singing with a good voice is for everyone. It's just, it's for everyone. So I was just like thinking that, oh, if it's for everyone, it means that my own understanding that when you are empowered, it's not about nice voice alone, but when you are powered by the Spirit of God, he, you, you will sing it with your whole heart. You will be empowered and you worship God in, with your whole heart in truth and in spirit. So it means that we have to have learned it that when I'm singing to my maker, I have to learn it. I have to give my energy to it, to sing with my whole heart. Well, that's a very interesting um, video. I believe that uh, Muslims, of course, have learned some of the things you should consider when reciting the Quran. And he has mentioned some of those um, four key things that uh, should come to your mind when you want to recite the Quran. And then the first one he says that you should consider is the intention and the intention interpret that you should uh, do it for the sake of Allah. That's all. Everything you should do, it should be for the sake of God. So if you are a Christian or you are a Muslim, anything you are doing, it should be for the sake of God. It should not be for the sake of maybe the Imam or it should not be for the sake of the pastor or for the sake of people are going to see me in the front doing this. That's the reason why I should do it. No, that should not even be your intention in the first place. Or I want to go to the church and sing, right? because i want people to know see that i have a nice voice no this is what he's trying to say and that's the reason why i wanted you to go first yes so that you singing to explain it reason why i says that you understand i could use singing and recitation you understand interchangeably is that sometimes probably you are supposed to sing with a chest voice right yeah and then therefore because you want to impress the people and then you switch from the chest voice to your head to to your head voice at that point in time then you try to go to try to hit some kind of pitch right because you want a narrow pitch and so that you can go high right instead of using the chest voice you understand to sing praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice chest voice right but because maybe you want the people you understand to impress them maybe probably this is how you may go praise the lord Praise the Lord. It's not necessary, right? You don't have to use your head voice. Just use the chest voice, right? Just do it the way you understand it will what? Glorify God. And that's why he went on to say that like when you are doing so or when you are doing the recitation, you should be able to maintain your voice so that the hearer, the person who is hearing you, should be able to understand what you are saying so that the person can kind of try to imitate whatever you are saying. But don't be too very fast. That's why he was talking about the speed of it. When you are doing the recitation, you should be able to like do it. It may probably you are reciting the Surah Fatiha and all those things. You should be able to like say so that people can be able to like understand what you are saying. But don't say too very fast that people can, you know, they can't be able to like kind of get whatever you understand that you're trying to say. And then again, another thing is, as you are doing it, I need not to climb the pulpit, okay? Just because I want to impress somebody or because today in the church there's a lot of crowd probably that's not even the right time for me to preach right maybe probably that day it was somebody or maybe the assistant pastor that was supposed to preach but because of that day i was not expecting and before you know it either the minister came to the church that day or one of the senators came to the church that day or the president is coming to that church that day then i felt like oh now nah. since the president is coming today i will be the one to preach then i'll now step into the pulpit and then i begin to preach you are us 
there's somebody that has already been de dedicated to preach on that day. It means that God has a particular message that you want to send to the people on that very day. But you allow pride to come into you, right? At that point in time, then you go because of why? You want to impress. It's not that because of it was your time. You want to just impress the people. So at that point in time, you claim the people to preach. And this is exactly what you understand is trying to say. And I know that child, I think the Muslims don't really have a problem with it because I have seen situations where I will see a very a six year old, nine year old leading, you understand, recitation. I don't know, should I say leading recitation or leading the mocks or something like that, like people, the crowd. Anyway, you understand what I'm trying to say. Leading them, you understand, in the prayers or all those things. They don't care about it. As far as maybe it is the time for that. Yeah, nine year old or ten year old or seven year old to actually lead the people in the prayers. They allowed it. They don't have problem with it. But can you say the same thing to us? <laughs> See? So those are the standard certain things in the sense that this video is trying to talk about. Whatever you are doing, make sure you are doing to the glory of God and know that you are just just doing it in a stand for doing sake. This is the end of our video. If you like our reaction, you should like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section. And I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.